everyone and welcome to the WSO2 Identity Server Single Sign-On with OpenID Connect training video. In this video, we are going to learn how to use OpenID Connect to implement SSO. Let's begin by briefly understanding what Single Sign-On is. Single Sign-On, most commonly known as SSO, enables users to provide their credentials once and obtain access to multiple applications. This enables the users to sign into one application and gain access to all the other applications that share the same session. For more information on SSO, watch our WSO2 Identity Server single sign-on training video. OpenID Connect that is commonly known as OIDC is a well-known open standard that is used to implement federated authentication and single sign-on. OIDC is a simple identity layer on top of Oath2 protocol. It allows client applications to verify the identity of the end user based on the authentication performed by an authorization server, as well as to obtain basic profile information about the end user. Let's elaborate this to make it clearer. First, let's see why we need an additional layer on top of Oath2 as opposed to solely using Oath2. In general, Oath2 flow, the resource owner provides the credentials to the authorization server, followed by the authorization server sending an access token to the application. In this approach, even though the resource owner is authenticated against the authorization server, it does not provide any information about the end user to the client application. The authorization server only passes a token to the client application which can be used to access the resources on behalf of the end user. Hence, the client application is not aware of the user-related information. We can bridge this gap by sending the user information to the client application after the user's interaction with the authorization server. Let's look at an elaborated OIDC flow for further understanding. First, the resource owner attempts to access the application. The application sends an authorization request to the authorization server. In return, the authorization server obtains the credentials from the user, validates them, and sends an access token to the application along with the new token called ID token. There are two main additions to the basic Oath2 flow when it becomes an OIDC flow. The first one is the scope that is sent along with the authorization request by the application to the server. OpenID is added as a value of scope and is a specific term that is used to denote that it is an OIDC flow. On receiving the scope, the authorization server knows that it is an OpenID Connect request. In return, the authorization server sends an ID token along with the access token to the client application. This is the second attribute that makes a difference in the flow. The ID token is a JSON web token which contains user information. Here is a sample ID token. As you can see, it has three parts, the header, the body and the signature. In the left pane, these parts are shown in different colors and separated by a period. The header contains metadata about each message which is used to validate the signature. The body contains some mandatory attributes that needs to be given to the application's identity layer. ISS or issuer indicates the token issuer or the identity provider. Sub or the subject identifier represents the user who attempts to access the application. AUD or the audience represents the audiences interested in the ID token. EXP or expiry indicates the token expiry time. IAT or the issued at time defines the time at which the token was issued. Apart from these attributes, the token can contain other user information such as user claims. The signature will be used to preserve the integrity of the JWT. The application should have the public key and the information about the authorization server based on which it can validate the signature. 
The ID token, which represents the identity layer, provides user-related information such as who the user is, where and when was the user authenticated, the mode of authentication, the attributes the user had agreed to provide. Your IDC specification defines three main flows which can be used in different scenarios. Those are the authorization code flow, implicit flow, and hybrid flow, which we will be discussing in detail in the advanced training videos. In addition to the core OIDC specification, there are a set of other specifications that define different aspects of the OIDC ecosystem. The discovery specification defines how client applications dynamically discover information about open ID providers. The dynamic registration specification defines how clients dynamically register with open ID providers. Session management defines how to manage open ID connect sessions. Front channel and back channel logout specifications define how single logout is implemented. We have now come to the end of this training video. Let's have a quick recap of what we learned from this training. First, we got a brief introduction to SSO. Next, we discussed why we cannot solely use OAuth for authentication. Then, we learned about the ID token and the identity layer introduced in the OIDC protocol. Finally, we got an overview of the OIDC protocol and related specifications. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to get in touch with us through the following channels. Our email is im-dev at wso2.org. In Stack Overflow, tag your queries with wso2-identity-server. And also, you can join our Discord server using the following invite. Thanks for watching this video and hope to meet you in another exciting training video.